So welcome back to Valley Breakfast One and All. Now, would you cancel your social plans or not go to work if you had a bad cold nowadays? Um, obviously, we've all been through a very, very difficult time in terms of our own health. Um, but one in two adults have been hit hard by minor illnesses in the last six months but we're not visiting uh, the people that we can actually get some help from now who on earth could i go to to get that kind of advice about where i go for my health care than dr sarah jarvis good morning good morning uh, now this is a, 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 a fascinating study considering mm. everything we've been through and how we're all very much aware of our own health now um you know what what how is this happening that we're, we're not actually visiting either our gps or a pharmacist or people that are there and qualified to help us for these minor illnesses well interestingly this is research which come out from gsk they are committed to long-term self-care and they are focusing on the fact that every year 18 million appointments made with gps which could be dealt with by a pharmacist with self-treatment. Now that costs the NHS over two billion pounds wow. and it very much means that the GPs are not available to see people who have more urgent stuff. And that's the point. <laughs> it's not relieve pressure on the GPs so the GPs can go and have more coffee. It's really, <laughs> or some coffee would be good. Um, but it's relieve pressure on general practice so that we have more appointments available for serious illnesses. Now what this found was that on the plus side, 43% of people in the UK is planning to consult their pharmacist more often on matters of health and self-care. That's the good news. The bad news is that if you turn that on its head, mm. fewer than half of people are going to see the pharmacist for support on minor illnesses. And really worryingly, almost one in five people believe that the pharmacist can't help them. This is absolutely <laughs> their area of expertise. Pharmacists are absolutely not just trained to dispense medication. I mean, that's huge and it's really important. It's very complicated, but they have five years of specialist training and then more training on top. And one of their key areas is looking at minor illnesses. So your pharmacist can do a full assessment. They don't need an appointment, really importantly. <laughs> they can do a full assessment if it's safe to give you advice and self-care treatment, then they can offer you that self-care treatment. They've got a much wider range of medicines and remedies available over the counter that they can offer compared to what a GP can offer. And perhaps the really important thing is they are also absolutely trained to be able to know for certain whether you need to see a doctor. So if they say you can self-care safely, you can self-care safely. It is. It was one of the things we asked our listeners uh, for questions for you for this morning. And and there was very much a confusion about when it was, I think it's an education thing. People are saying, well, I, I, what is considered a minor illness? What hmm. What is the level that I go to? Is it a cough or a cold? Is it I've, I've suddenly developed vertigo? Is it I've suddenly yeah. developed this? It's uh, there's an unsureness. I think we are unsure about our yeah. own health. Um, Absolutely. And how, what can we do to kind of get genned up a little bit on, on, on how is, you know, where when we go to the pharmacist, when we need to book an appointment for a GP, when we need to go to A&E for something even more serious. Yeah. So if you think you're dying, you know, if you have <laughs> central crushing chest pain, mm. if you can't breathe, if you have very severe pain, that means that you can't do anything else. Clearly, that is an emergency. But for most other things, you know, one in 10 people say they're not clear what pharmacists offer. And one in five mm. think that pharmacists can't help with this sort of thing. Actually, if in doubt, your pharmacist is absolutely going to be able to tell you whether you should. Now, the first thing to point out, of course, is if you have got potential symptoms of COVID, mm. you don't go in and see the <laughs> pharmacist. You get yourself a PCR test first, yes. and only then do you let yourself loose on the world. But basically, unless you are acutely short of breath, unless there is blood involved, if you're bleeding profusely, if you're coughing up blood, if you've had a large amount of blood in your wee, or if you've had bleeding you know, ladies bleeding when you shouldn't have, if you've had bleeding from the back passage, those are not things for pharmacists, but pretty much everything is, unless it's severe pain, acutely unwell, central crushing chest pain, can't breathe, bleeding. Basically, most other stuff, speak to your pharmacist. 
and and is it that obviously you mentioned the the c word <laughs> uh, 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 that uh, you know making sure that you know we're, we're healthy healthy and tested we've become very much more aware of that but it, but is it a, a case as well of things like coughs and colds obviously we haven't been socially interacting for such a long time yeah. but now we're finding there's actually more we're more susceptible to these things because our immune systems are are, are not used to dealing with it on a daily basis that's precisely right and of course it's one of the, the one of the very big reasons that we are absolutely encouraged people to get their COVID boosters if they're eligible and to get their flu vaccines if they are eligible because we may well be in for a very bad flu season this year. Last year there was virtually no flu about because people were either under restrictions or they were in lockdown. That is not going to be the case this year and as you so rightly say our immunity to flu has very much waned but so has our immunity to coughs and colds and that really does have an impact on the likelihood of us coming down with them. And, and I think as well, we've we've got used to different ways of working now. You know, if you've got a cough and a cold that may be spreading around the office, it yeah. may be that a couple of days working from home, which we're now used to, um, yeah. is, is possibly a way, you know, to, to help you recover and also to make sure that we're not spreading these germs as much as we, we were before. Absolutely. Interestingly, when we look at what people are doing differently, two thirds of people say they are behaving differently now compared to before the pandemic. Now, the first thing they're doing, I'm delighted to say, is getting a COVID test. I wish that 100 percent of people were behaving differently in that respect but actually people are socially distancing if they've got a cough or a cold they're cancelling plans with friends in a way that perhaps they wouldn't have done before and really I do think that is a good idea if there are things you can cancel please do because frankly nobody wants your cold well this is true I could I I don't sound too good on the air when I've got a cold and, uh, no. and I'm bad enough at seven o'clock in the morning when I'm saying good morning to people um obviously all uh, absolutely fantastic advice and uh, and we will uh, uh, you know try, try but I know that actually we've got a few pharmacists who are regular listeners uh, good. To, uh, to the to the show so they'll be delighted that we're, we're picking up their job this morning um, well 91 percent of people class a pharmacist in the public as a key worker yeah. you ask GPs it's 100%. They are an invaluable member of the primary healthcare team. And we have got to start making better use of their extraordinary skills. Dr. Sarah Jarvis, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us this morning. Um, we always ask our guests uh, as, we're, as we're coming out of the interview uh, to choose something that's uh, going to brighten up the valley a little bit, uh, something that they would love to listen to. Um, what can we play for you this morning? Well, I'm not sure how much it's relaxing, but it is one of my <laughs> favourite songs and it takes me back. It's Jackson Brown running on empty. Oh, it's a beautiful song. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarah Jarvis.